It was a fast airplane, much faster than the old one, which we are trained. It was a very maneuverable aircraft. It has a good climbing rate. So this was the first impression of the F-109. We had uh, uh, two weapons on top of the engine with a cannon through the, uh, through the propeller. And we had also two uh, 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 cannons underneath the wing. Uh, I didn't prefer this because in a tight turn, when you had a high chi, the chain who supported the wing weapons broke. And if you get a broke, you get a whole a jam on the whole system. So I took them out and I only, in most of the times, I only flew with three weapons. Two guns, 50 millimeter on top of the engine and 20 millimeter through the, through the propeller. And uh, this was my individual uh, choice. I have 275 air victories. And uh, I want to mention, you know, we were often asked, why did the Germans have so high scoring? Uh, my answer is, there are three conditions. First, if you take off and go into the air, you have to find a target. We always found targets. In most cases, we were outnumbered. Compared with this, many American pilots who flew 50 missions over Germany, they never saw a German fighter, so he couldn't get a, a victory. This was number one, to find a target. Number two, this was, how long did you stay in operation? You know, we had a different system. We were short of pilots. So the pilots have to be uh, uh, in combat uh, as long as it, it, it was possible. And thirdly, we were uh, engaged even uh, after we have been injured. Uh, when we recovered, we inspect to your unit and fly it again. The Focke Wolf 19D9 was the fastest aircraft that the German Air Force had and as propeller driven aircraft, no doubt about that. Focke Wolf D9 was very good in, in dogfighting as well as in speed. And these two, two advantages were much better than any other German fighter we had in before. So the Focke Wolf D9 was easy to fly much easier than the old one, the A8, and much, much easier to fly than the 109. It was absolutely a pilot's aircraft. Everything which was bad in the 109, as far as switches are concerned, as far as the outlook was concerned, out of the cockpit, that was a much better, you were sitting much higher than in the, in the 109, so you had a much better look around. All these things were better than on the old 109. But when you flew the 190 uh, after the 10th or 11th mission, you had the feeling you are at home. The cockpit was much better. The in instrumentation was much better. The speed was higher. The, the dogfight possibility was much better. So what do you expect more? The 262 was had a marvelous design. It was an uh, aircraft of the future. The 262 was much superior over any uh, any Allied fighter what, I, what you met at the time in the in the air, whether it was an American one or whether it was an English one. You were feeling like a king against these uh, other aircraft, enemy aircraft in the air. That the 262 had a lot of difficulties, uh, especially with the engine, and especially with the speed. For example, the engine was a very bad engine. The, the material of the engine was, was at that time, at the end of the war, not the best one. So you, you every time had to look very carefully what your engine is doing. The second one was, we didn't have at that time any speed brakes or dive brakes on that aircraft. And so, so out of it came when you went into a shallow dive.
you came very near to what we called at that time the Mach effect. The Mach effect was the speed of the sound. Uh, we called it the Mach effect, not knowing too much about the speed of the sound. The 262 was at that time that aircraft that you everywhere expecting to be better than any other aircraft in the world. And no doubt of this, uh, also it had a lot of difficulties, as I mentioned. It was the best aircraft that you could find at this time. No doubt I like it.